Audacity has released the alpha build of Audacity version 3.2. And in this video, I'm going to show you what some of the differences are in this alpha build compared to the current production version of Audacity, which is version 3.1.3. Here we go. This screen that I have open here before us is version 3.2 of Audacity. It's the alpha build. So it's a very early build. It's not in production yet. It's not even in beta yet. So this is just a very early look at Audacity version 3.2. But just by looking at it, you can see that there are some differences. Also, you'll notice here in the tools toolbar, we only have four buttons now. What's missing is the magnify button. You know, the little magnifying glass that you could zoom into a section of track. But that's still right here in the edit toolbar. And so we're not really losing any functionality there. Another thing that you'll notice is right here where it says audio setup. If I drop this box down, you can see that I can set up my playback devices here. I can set up my recording devices here. I can set up my recording channels and I can adjust my audio settings. I can adjust all three of those by clicking here. It opens up this window and I can get even more detailed in what I'm looking at or I can see it all in one window anyway. Now that's different from previous versions because you'll remember, let me cancel out of here. You'll remember that in previous versions, the toolbar looked like this. And these settings were down here on this row of the toolbar. So what this does by putting it in a button like that is it saves us some good real estate within Audacity so that we have a little bit more room to look at our project. And you'll notice here that in the meter toolbar, it pretty much looks the same. The difference being I can no longer click in the meter toolbar to monitor. But if I come up here to the microphone icon and I click once, I can start monitoring it here. And this will show me my level as I'm speaking with whatever device I've got selected. If I come back up to that icon one more time, I can tell it to stop monitoring and I can look at options. And when we click options, it opens up this uh, recording meter options window and gives us some choices. I'd set right now to gradient. If I set it to RMS, I haven't done this yet, so let's do this together. If I set it to RMS and I click OK, what does that do to my meter? And we start monitoring. It looks like uh, I'm taking on a completely different thing here. And it's looking at RMS value right now, which I need as an audiobook narrator. I need to know what that is. So I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit more and see exactly what it's doing, where the RMS level is set, and what it's looking at as far as a reference goes. But right now, let's go back up and click once on that. And let's go back to options and let's click uh, gradient one more time. We'll leave it at uh, dB for now. Well, why not go ahead and change it? Let's change it to linear. We got it back to gradient. We'll change it to linear and let's see what that does for us. So now instead of a, a DB reference, we've got some kind of a linear reference, which looks real similar to the audacity of old. You remember over in the uh, track header that we could look at uh, DB view. We could look at linear view. It looks like that same kind of a thing going on here in the uh, meter tool or the meter toolbar. So let me go back up here and click this again. I'm guessing I'm looking at this for the first time with you. So I don't really know everything about it. I'm just kind of working my way through it as I, as I go. Let's put that back to DB. And what happens if we go horizontal instead of default? Didn't really change. We're already horizontal. How about if we go to vertical? What does that do for us? Let's try that. Let's select vertical. And now, okay, I see what it's doing. It's like a vertical meter, which really can't really tell much with it. There's not much to the scale there. It's not really functional in that view. Maybe there's a different view I could put it in to expand that out a little bit more. But let's put it back to automatic and the refresh rate per second looks like it defaults to 30. And so I'm just going to leave it that leave it at that. So it looks from that that it's refreshing the information that it's receiving 30 times a second. So I'm going to click OK there. And that's the meter toolbar. Now a big difference is in the recording. When we record now, our track header looks different. We can put stackable events or stackable effects in it rather, which can be moved around or removed. And this is a real big step toward non-destructive editing. So what I'm gonna do right now, and again, we're doing this together. I haven't done this before. I'm gonna press R to record and let's begin to lay down a track in here so we can get some audio. It doesn't have to be a long track. In fact, right there should be sufficient. And now you'll notice over here in a track header, there's this effects button. My microphone's in the way, so I can't really see it real clear. But if we press effects, we can see now that we can add effects here into the track header. 
And we have different options for effects. We don't have a lot of Audacity options yet. Again, this is alpha. This is not in production. I've got a couple of waves meters that I could put in there, but I'm not going to do that. I got a little bit of isotope. But let's go ahead and let's put a dynamics processor on it with our Apple plugins. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I've got Apple plugins. If you're on Windows, you're not going to have that option. And then if we add another effect, let's go back this time and let's put some graphic EQ on it. And then let's add another effect because we're really on a roll now. So let's come back to Apple and let's, uh, mm -hmm, let's put a compressor on it. And now let's say that we're going to record this. We have our effects. We've, let's pretend we've set them up. We like, we like how we've got them set. We like where we've got the compressor set. We like our EQ set. We like the dynamics processor where we've got that, which is kind of just basically another level of compressor. But for the sake of demonstrating this, this works. Now let's say that I'm moving along here and I realize that, hey, I don't, you know, the first thing I want to do is put a graphic EQ on this. I don't want to compress it first. I don't want a processor on it. I want to put some graphic EQ on it first. So I can simply come up here to the effects now and I can drag it and I can rearrange the effects the way I want them. I can also turn them on and off right here. If I decide I don't want one, I don't have to necessarily remove it. I can just turn it on and off right there and I can rearrange the effects and put it in my chain the way that I want it. That's huge. That is very huge because when you save this file now and you reopen it tomorrow or this afternoon or whenever you reopen it, you can still manipulate those effects. You can move them around. You can still delete them. You can turn them on and off. That's a non-destructive editing. And that's coming our way, it looks like, in version 3.2. If we look down here at the bottom, we, we can see our selection toolbar is the same. We still have the same options for project rate and snap to. Our play at speed toolbar is on the bottom now, but it looks like it can be moved. So if you don't want it on the bottom, uh, let's you know move it up here maybe and get it where we can see it a little bit better. So these options can still be moved. In fact, all of these toolbars you'll see that have the little gray buttons on them can be moved and repositioned. And just like earlier versions of Audacity, if you're moving the toolbars around and it gets a little bit confusing and you think, well, I don't really like what I did, you can come back up to the view menu, go down to toolbars and reset the toolbars. And you'll see in this case, what it did is it put the play at speed toolbar back down at the bottom. So some good changes. We've gained some real estate. We've got stackable effects, which are non-destructive. And again, this is the alpha version. I've heard that the beta version is coming out in September, which means that 3.2 will be sometime after that. So it looks like some good stuff's coming our way. I wanted to just bring this to your attention and show this to you real quick. I won't take up any more of your time. But hey, if you like this video, be sure and like it. If you like my channel, be sure and subscribe. So that's all I have for you right now, and I'm going to let you go. And until next time, y'all take care.